Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you all of the stuff that I do before I start the final paintings. That's all of the prep work and all of the planning all the way up to the point that I put that first wash of color on the final painting. So I, uh, I haven't shown this process in a while now. I'm excited to, to walk through it with you guys and just talk about all of the stuff that goes into actually planning out a piece because there's a lot of steps to it. So right at the beginning, this is usually what it looks like when I'm starting off. I just like to do my thumbnails traditionally in my sketchbook and I try to figure things out. With this one, I... I got kind of an image in my head and I decided that I wanted to take a reference of myself to work off of while I was thumbnailing. So I did do that and then I thumbnailed it out and, and I liked where it was going. It felt like it had some of those things that I wanted to explore in a final painting. So, so after I finish sketching that out and just the thumbnail, getting the idea down, I bring that into Photoshop. And this step solves a couple of different problems as I'm working on it. First, it allows me to play with a few different compositions. So originally when I, when I do the thumbnail, I put the bounds down so that I know what the dimensions are of the actual piece and where the composition is going to flow with the edges of the piece and everything. But when I bring it into Photoshop, it does allow me to, to actually try out a few different compositions, see if something else works a little bit better or if it has something that I was missing in that first thing. So I'll, I will usually do that, play around with it. And this is also the point where I truly decide which size of piece I want to do. So eight by 10 and 11 by 14 are actually very close in dimension. So those two are the ones that I always do prints of. And they're also the two sizes that I usually default to. So, so I just like to take a minute to decide, okay, how complex is it? How much time do I want to spend on the piece? And then I can choose which size to actually make it. And then I will format that, that file to be the right size moving forward. And you can do any of these things with any digital program really there's a lot of free versions out there but but i also love to make sure that i flip the piece as i'm refining it and sketching on it a little bit more that way i make sure that there's no weird anatomical issues that you just don't see until you see it mirrored that is such a helpful tool that that working on the digital sketch helps me with so i i flip it back and forth every little bit, every little while while I'm working on it. And, and sometimes at this point, I will get to a certain level of refinement in the sketch digitally, and then I will print it off at a fairly light opacity onto a sketch piece of paper, and then I'll continue really working on it traditionally. It just kind of depends on what I'm feeling at the moment at that time. This one, I continued refining it digitally and, and I was still enjoying it and I was liking the process still, so it wasn't really an issue. But, but yeah, at this point, this is just where I, I'm getting it up to the point that I need it to be to be a final sketch for the piece. So I'm fixing any issues. I'm trying to get that personality into the character. So I'll spend a little bit more time really figuring out exactly what kind of features I want and and getting the right attitude in the eyes and all of those things. And also trying to make sure that I got the anatomy correct, especially like in the hands. This is always the point where I like to take a minute to count the hands or the count the fingers, I should say, make sure that there's enough fingers. And also I make sure that the hand is correctly placed. So it's, it's either the right hand or the left hand, but it's, it's correct. And working on this hummingbird, I just flipped that initial rough sketch over because the reference that I was working with was facing towards the right. And it is just much easier to work off of reference when you're working at that same direction. You don't have to flip it over in your brain. So I just flipped it, I sketched it out, and then I flipped both the rough sketch and the more final sketch back towards the character so that we have that directional pointing towards the character's face. And then after I'm done with that final refined sketch, I flipped it over a couple of times to make sure everything looks right. I just print it off on my regular laser printer, I think. It's just one of those cheap office ones. And I use that to use a light box to transfer it onto the sheet of my final watercolor paper. I use Arches Cold Press. It's definitely by far my favorite watercolor paper. And uh, yeah, I just transfer it over with a regular graphite mechanical pencil, just a really tiny one that allows me to erase any issues or mistakes that I have. 
but it's also there enough that I can see it while I'm painting over it. And the next step is one that actually has greatly improved how much I enjoy using watercolors, and that's where I mount the paper onto a very thin wood panel. And the wood panel is for artwork, so it's archival and it's ready for art. But I just take a little bit of matte medium and put that on the wood panel and spread it out with a brush, and then I adhere that to the back of my already transferred artwork that's on my watercolor paper. And uh, yeah, this step has been so nice for working on watercolors because it keeps it flat so it doesn't buckle underneath and it just feels like a solid piece of artwork while I'm working on it. So I found that I just feel much more attached to it as I'm working on it. And I do find that less is more with the glue. When I first started off with this technique, I used too much and it saturated into the paper and then it gave a really weird texture to it when I was painting on top of it. So now I'm I'm much lighter with the with the actual glue, the matte medium on top of it and it adheres nicely and it keeps it nice and flat. And then I just put another panel on top of it and some weights on top of all of that so that it just squishes it down into the paper and the panel and the glue and everything can be pressed together as it's drying and I usually leave it for at least several hours preferably overnight just to make sure that everything is dry and ready to go and uh, after it's all dry I'll take everything off obviously and then just trim the edges where I left just a little bit of overhang of the paper and then I finally get to the very fun part of doing color comps I actually just take that digital file of my of my sketch that I was working on. I shrink it down so I can fit a couple of them on a five by seven and I print that off very low opacity on my art printer. And luckily the ink on there is pretty waterproof. So I'm able to just go in and paint on top of it. I use the same paper that I'm doing the final piece on. So this is the Arches Cold Press and I just get to play around with it. I usually have a starting point of what colors I want to play with or at the very least a, a specific color for a specific area of the piece. And then I'll just start building around it and building it up basically like a puzzle where I may know one piece, I just have to make sure that the others around it fit into it so that there's the right contrast. If I have an area that's really light, it needs to be framed by something that's darker so that they don't get lost within themselves. So there's just things like that that I'm looking for. Also different color palettes that will have different moods. So yeah, it's just a lot of a lot of considerations of of what I want the final to be, what I want it to feel like, and that emotion behind it. And it's always a good idea to try out different variations, try lots of different things with your color comps, but sometimes when I'm working, I just get hooked on a certain idea and I, I know that that's what I want for the final, so I'll just start working on things that revolve around that. Once I started on this first color comp, I loved the idea of having this pastel blue hair for the character and I knew that I wanted her eyes to be more on the red pinky color so they would really just pop off of each other so well so I knew right off the bat that that's what I wanted and I really wanted to center around it. I also wanted her hoodie to be relatively dark as I was working on this so so with those few things that I had in my head and I, I knew that that's what I wanted for the final I just started working on working on different variations that that were around that. And one of the big things that ended up driving it is I have this certain paint that I thought it looked so cool. It's Lunar Blue from Daniel Smith. It's very granulating and I love it. But I don't have a lot of opportunities to use it in my pieces. There have been a few times where I've like tried to make it work but I just knew it wasn't going to so I had to pull it out. And this time I, I pulled it out, I, I tried it, and I really loved it. I loved it in, I think I used it in the background of the first color comp, and then I used it in her hoodie for the second color comp, and I, I really loved that. And it just felt like the right time to let it be a feature in one of my pieces and actually use it. So that was one of the things that was really excited exciting about working on this color comp is that it helped me realize a place that I can use this new color that I've really wanted to use for a while. And it just makes it even more exciting to, to finish these up and have this new thing that I get to play with when I'm working on the final piece. And I actually found references of these really beautiful white hummingbirds. So I knew that that's what I wanted for this piece. So having this really 
dark rich background works perfectly for having these white birds that are going to just pop right off of it and most of the bird is right above the background so you're going to be able to see that silhouette really strongly in the final so that that just helped me key everything in i did make sure also that the the hood that she's wearing that it was lighter than the background i think in the final it needs to be a bit darker though just so that her hair does have more contrast so that it it probably will end up being that her hair is the lightest and her hood is a little bit darker and then the background is darkest. And a quick announcement, I'm actually going to do a Q&A video for next week. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask me, I have a link down in the description that will take you over to a post on my Patreon and that's free for anyone. So anyone can ask a question over there, but it is hosted over there. So there'll be a link down there that'll take you over there. You can leave that there and then get the answers on my next video next week. So, so yeah, of course I do want to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. You guys are absolutely incredible. You help me to make these videos and make my artwork. So thank you so much for the support that you show me over there. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Oh yeah, make sure that you stay tuned for eventually when I do get around to painting the final of this piece so I can show you the second half of working on a painting. But, but that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week.